everyone. Welcome to the HESA final General Assembly for the year. We're really excited that you're here today. I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll dive right in. Okay. There we go. And can we just confirm that everyone can see it? It says that it's sharing, but I don't see it yet. It says loading. Okay, can we see it now? There it is, yep. Okay, perfect. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming to the HESA Final General Assembly. We're really excited to have you here. Today is a celebration event. We're gonna talk about everything that we've accomplished this year, what we hope to accomplish next year. And I'm sure some of you have questions about recent events. Um, so we just wanna make sure that we answer all of those questions for you as well. First and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about the Student Wellbeing Council. Um, this year was our first year of having the Student Wellbeing Council, and it was created uh, due to uh, COVID complications and students feeling they didn't have a way to uh, deal with the mental health uh, issues and anxiety uh, that the pandemic caused for them. And so we wanted to make sure that students had a community that they could rely on, um, people that they could come to to talk about any issues they might be having, but also how to improve school initiatives to make sure we were really taking care of the students and that they also knew about the resources that were, were available. Um, some of the feedback we received um, from students was, we've heard their resources, we don't know how to access them, we don't know where specifically they, they are. And so we've held a lot of initiatives on campus to make sure that students did know about that and also had opportunities like in this photo here to just go and do fun things like create pottery together and have that bonding. So the council will continue next year. Uh, we did schedule a meeting for last week to have a final event for this current year uh, that was canceled. I'm not sure why. Um, however, there are plans to continue with the council next year. So if you are interested on serving uh, with the Student Wellbeing Council, please reach out to me or Danielle, uh, since I will no longer be the representative since I'm graduating in well, this month, I guess I was going to say in May, but it is May, uh, May 23rd, hopefully, fingers crossed. I'm waiting for that final paper to be graded. So we'll see what happens. Also, um, the Harvard Square Homeless Shelter Spring Supply Drive is still live. Um, every year we do two different supply drives, one for the winter and one for the spring slash summer for the Harvard Square Homeless Shelter. Uh, they're just an invaluable service for the community. Uh, they operate out of the local Lutheran church on the lower floor, and we regularly um, ask for donations um, to give them supplies. So this link here will take you to an Amazon wish list for them. And you can pick items that the shelter has has picked out um, for things that they really, really need, and it goes directly to them. So they really rely on the supply drive a lot. It's really helpful to them every year. So if you feel like donating, we make it really easy for you at the link. For the postcard protest update, um, originally uh, when Claudine Gay was still in office, we sent out 3,000 postcards under the old design as pictured in this photo here. However, at this point, we sent out all 10,000 total postcards that we meant to send out. When I started this initiative, I always said, we're gonna do at least 10,000, that's the goal. We've finally done it. Um, and our plans are to pass ESRI on. Whoever becomes the next president, um, they'll have their own ideas and their own vision for how they wanna tackle ESRI. Uh, this year, the Middle East conflict has kind of taken center stage of of Harvard's attention. And so we knew that when the issue started showing up that that probably would be the priority of the university. However, uh, that doesn't mean we give up on our initiatives. It doesn't mean we don't advocate for ourselves. We have to continue doing that. So 10,000 postcards, 500 letters sent. People know who we are. People know what we stand for. I feel very encouraged uh, by the fact that um, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences Council, who we've been reaching out to alongside the Harvard Corporation and the Board of Overseers, has been um, reported in the Crimson as having questions for the corporation and the Board of Overseers about issues like transparency and initiatives and wanting more 
um, clarity in what they're doing and more communication amongst those different decision makers. So I think um, even though, you know, in extension studies is still a thing for now, I think a lot of our hard work and advocacy this year has contributed to the Faculty of Arts and Sciences having questions for these other governing bodies and, and being like, hey, what's up with this? What's up with that? Um, we know some people didn't even know about the in extension studies problem. And now they're aware because they've heard from me every single day for the past 365 days. <laughs> so with that, um, I did order a thousand more, so I might as well send them out <laughs> and I will. Uh, there are, I think six or seven new Faculty of Arts and Sciences representatives uh, that were added just back in April. So they should hear about this issue too, and they will be. Okay, so this event just finished. Um, April 25th, we had our Harvard Art Museum's exclusive night tour where we went through three different exhibits. 14 people came to the live event. It was a lot of fun. For those of you who didn't know, uh, this semester I had the pleasure of working at the Harvard Art Museums. And so it was really nice to kind of share with everyone what the Harvard Art Museums are all about, what you can do, um, what you can see there, and the different jobs that are available there as well. And earlier on May 4th at 1 p.m., um, Dr. Barber had a teaching advanced poetry writing lecture. It was really cool. He specifically talked about one of my favorite poets of all time, uh, Gwendolyn Brooks, if you're familiar with her. She um, is most famous for We Real Cool, a poem that she later in life was kind of irritated by because it's the only poem that people would talk about <laughs> publicly or in media. Um, but he kind of talked about the relationship between poetry and songwriting. What makes something poetry? What makes something uh, a song instead or a lyric? And that relationship through time between um, being like a, a lyricist and a poet. So it was really fascinating. We recorded that lecture as well, and we hope to take it live within the next week or so. Upcoming events. So right after the General Assembly today, um, we do have an upcoming professor spotlight with Dr. Heron. Please definitely stay for that if you can. He's talking about the culture and politics of the professional managerial class. And he's just a fascinating, fascinating professor. He studied anthropology in undergrad, and then he went back and got his PhD in anthropology as well. And he is also very passionate about writing and regularly lectures about writing as well. Okay, also upcoming, this is our photo here from last year's HESA Awards. We're doing that again. Um, so what are the HESA Awards? People have been asking. The HESA Awards are an opportunity to recognize students, professors, and staff who've contributed to our lively ecosystem throughout the year or in multiple years. Uh, we're having this event live, but it will be a hybrid event. So for those of you who, can, who can't attend in person, you will be able to attend on Zoom. It's going to be at Lehman Hall at 7 p.m. Okay, and you can RSVP for the event and nominate at this link here. You can also bring one guest with you on this RSVP form. And just as a heads up, when you nominate someone, that also counts as your personal vote. We don't have like traditional voting where we put up a poll later and people select. It's just an individual form where you're RSVPing if you're coming and you're nominating your people, and that counts as your vote. So we'll tally everyone's individual confidential responses together, and then we'll go ahead and order the awards. Uh, just keep in mind that your nominations are due by this upcoming Tuesday. Board updates. Okay, so it's it's the end of my time here technically. Um, with what's going on with the elections being delayed now, uh, Danielle and mine's ex officio status jumps ahead and we technically are going to be acting president and vice president up until September. Uh, we're going to see if we can meet with administration and still have summer events so that students have things to do. Uh, since summer is an especially lively time for Harvard Extension School, that's when the majority of the international students and students who need to um, finish their on-campus classes come to Harvard. And so we want to make sure that they have events and that they know that HESA is there for them. So we'll be working on that. 
Um, again, ESRI, I've done everything uh, that I set out to do for the year regarding that campaign. Uh, the next president will be taking on their own vision for ESRI when they're elected. Some highlights from this year. Uh, prior to us doing something about it, you couldn't get access to the computer labs on campus without registering your ID card twice. So when you get your ID card, it gives you a majority of access to most of the buildings. But for extension students, it doesn't give you access to the computer lab. You actually have to physically go to the computer lab and re-register your ID card. So we escalated that issue with administration. And now you should be able, when you get your ID card from Smith Campus Center, if you're from the extension school, you'll automatically have access to the computer lab now. So you won't have to register twice. Um, our October rally was really successful. It was a great way to, you know, um, we mostly, we do summer events, but mostly things are in business starting September. So to have an October rally really early on um, got the Crimson's eyes on us very quickly and kept some momentum going behind our initiatives. So that was very important. And I think that was a successful opportunity there. And then we also started conversations fostered about opportunities for international students. One big thing that we we found an issue with was that for faculty aid positions, even if you're a US citizen, if you're out of the country for any reason, you cannot be a faculty aid. And if you're an international student, you can't obtain a faculty aid position because there are laws in place that prohibit Harvard from uh, being able to pay international students. So we've been working with admin to ensure that there's an opportunity for international students to be able to take advantage of a faculty aid position without pay. Um, while calling it something similar or calling it a different program uh, so that they can get some research experience. Also, we push back at a lot of negative media this year. Um, as we all know, there was a specific professor that is or was teaching at Harvard Extension School that decided to get in a Twitter argument with a, a known politician and kind of threw the extension school under the bus regarding that we pushed back against that negative media and took control of our own narrative and really stood up for the extension school another thing that wasn't reported on uh, but was very important was standing up for our veterans this year um, for those who might not know our veterans lost all of their uh, financial aid benefits uh, due to a clerical error at the veterans office uh, this was about around November or December, I want to say. And the Crimson was going to write an article about it, but they ultimately decided not to. Uh, we escalated the issue to the dean, and we were able to reinstate the majority of uh, the veterans' benefits uh, so that they could continue their educations at Harvard Extension School. But that was a pretty controversial moment. And uh, the email that went out to the school uh, was... Uh, pretty terrifying. So we were really glad that we were able to do something about that and, and assist our veterans. That was a major issue. So this year, I think, was very successful. I'm very proud of the HESA board um, and all of the societies and clubs who've worked together to make sure that HES remains, um, you know, what it is, which is an amazing institution. The Harvard Graduate Council updates from April. Uh, for, for those of you who weren't here, I just wanted to let you know the award ceremony was on April 22nd. Dalton was elected president. He's from HBS and our very own Bradley Canales from HES was elected vice president. Um, they will have to pick uh, a president of advocacy and communications and other positions, but those elections don't occur until spring. And so after April 22nd at the awards ceremony, the Harvard Graduate Council kind of shut down. Um, there are some schools like yesterday, the Harvard Graduate uh, School of Education did have their social mixer with the Harvard Graduate Council. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I went to that. Uh, but in terms of official business, there are no resolutions until September. But what I want everyone to think about is that with the election cycle being delayed, that means we really have to think ahead of time of who we're going to appoint because we have up to four representatives representing HES who will be going to a monthly meeting and also um, monthly committee meetings as well on behalf of Harvard Extension School. So please think about who you think might 
well, might be good. And then once a new president's elected, please let the president know that so that whoever is elected can appoint those next representatives. Um, resolutions are a great time to talk about things outside of what HESA can do uh, alone uh, to advocate for official school business. And now we're gonna move on to student society updates. Okay, do we have CWLSS here? I think, I think so. Art is here, yeah? Yep, I see Art here. Um, can we can we unmute Mark or uh, um, Art? There we go. Yep, I think uh, it should be okay. good. I sent the request. Can you hear me to... now? Yes. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was muted. I couldn't unmute myself. Uh, yes, CWSS is here. We are here in force, actually. Um, so we'll get started. Okay, our past events, we only had one past event uh, since the last um, uh, meeting, um, and that was our uh, spotlight with John Meyer. I misspelled John on the slide. Um, he produced a uh, an indie film called Dave Made a Maze. Um, he talked about that film and the production and the, and the uh the trials and tribulations that go with producing a Hollywood film. Um, he's also an actor. He starred in several uh, television shows. Um, Gustavo hosted the uh, the spotlight and it went amazingly. Uh, he's a great person. I think he may be uh, an ally that we may be able to reach out to in the future um, that we kind of keep in our pocket. So it was a, it was a great um, event with John C. Meyer. I don't think that one's been posted to the YouTube channel yet, but um, it should pretty soon. Um, our final newsletter I'm going to be sending out as my uh, going away message to the society as president because I'm graduating on the 23rd uh, with some of you guys. Um, and also on May 15th, uh, we're going to be issuing or we're going to be publishing issue number three of Brattle Street Review. Uh, we have quite a few stories lined up for publication on that. Um, and we are still taking a uh, submission. So if you have something you want to submit, please submit. Um, if if it's worthy for publication, we will publish it. If we think it needs some work, we will reach out to you and we will offer um, suggestions on how to improve it so you can publish it again. Um, our goal is to get students published and help students become better writers. Um, upcoming events, the only thing we really have on the horizon is commencement. Um, we had our final leadership meeting last night. Uh, we solidified things for the summer and start planning for next year. Uh, commencement's coming up and we're probably going to host, uh, well, not host, we're going to pull together a bunch of students that are graduating in Cambridge the day before graduation um, and have a little in -person, informal in-person event. Uh, that's still kind of in the planning is a little bit. Um, our website, harvardwriters.org, please visit that if you can. And I will take this last couple of minutes to introduce uh, the board for next year. Natalie, as you all know, who has been our director of events, is moving up to president. Uh, Ryan, who is in the meeting right now, is taking over um, as vice president. Anna Maria, who is here as well, she is moving from the director of administration to director of events. And Carly Ray, who is here as well, uh, she is taking over director of communications. I am sticking around for another year to be an advisor to the president. Uh, it's a non-voting position. It's strictly an advisory uh, uh, position. Uh, Kat is also sticking around as marketing manager. And Kendra is sticking around as the director of technology. Uh, Gustavo is not on the picture because uh, he's not filling a, a specific billet. However, he is hosting a podcast series uh, throughout the upcoming year. So we are losing no one and we are building our team stronger. It's great for, for, for CWSS right now. We're very proud of what we've done in the last year. And the next year is looking even brighter. Um, and that's about it for us. Art, I like how you said that's about it for us when you just mentioned all of this amazing stuff. <laughs> Congratulations to everybody. This is amazing. And I'm Thank glad you. the author spotlight went well. I'm looking forward to the, the final newsletter as well, but I'm glad that, you know, you've gained even more people. Uh, it looks like a very promising board. So congratulations, everyone. I look forward to seeing what happens next year.
All right, is GDPSS present today? Okay, we're gonna move on then. Um, I know a lot of people are still doing finals or prepping for either graduation or moving or like me both. So if there's not a society member available, just know that's probably why. And that's totally okay. Anyone from IOPS? They haven't been responding. They haven't, uh, this hasn't been updated since the fall. That is okay. We'll just move on. Okay, PSS? They're not here today either. Okay, well, it looks like just on the slide, they um, are referencing the PTSD webinar that they did. And um, if you want to join their social media, they left their social media sites up and their prior webinars can be accessed at this link. So feel free to access that. And then VSS. I'm surprised that they're not here either and they have not updated their slide either. That is okay. Um, again, finals, <laughs> moving getting to commencement, trying to leave Graduation. commencement. Yeah, I saw hotels like upwards of $2,000 now. Anyone who's waiting last minute is going to have a hard time. So it's that's what I imagine crazy. is going on for, <laughs> for a lot of people. So, um, but, you know, with the societies, everyone in a society is also invited to the HESA Awards too. So I'm sure we'll see many of these people at the HESA Awards and celebrate together. So that's the idea. I also think a lot of people are just sick of Zoom at this point. <laughs> you know, uh, completely understandable. Okay, so um, Lifestyle Medicine Society. Carly Ray, you want to take it away? So well, I decided to make it bright, our slide today for positivity. And so um, we have excitingly started to launch our social media pages. We haven't had any official events, but we're working on that for the fall. And I know we were talking about having like cooking demonstrations um, and accompanying that with some speakers. Um, but we do have our social media up, which is on our link tree. And I know we have LinkedIn up, uh, Instagram up. And then we are working on a website um, that's just not up yet because of finals, but I'm excited to have that up. Um, and then a quote that kind of I like to kind of spread is empower your journey, choose lifestyle medicine for lifelong wellness. And on our WhatsApp group is I try every day to kind of post an uplifting message. So there's either like um, for finals, I did box breathing, um, but, you know, like yoga classes. I know we have one active member where she's a yoga teacher. So we were talking about um, doing even a virtual yoga class, maybe in the fall or something fun. Um, and then we did announce our leadership team at our last general assembly meeting, but I did post that on our social media as well. So um, if there is any societies that want to partner, I know the creative writing, we were talking about doing a book club um, in the fall. So that's something we'll work on as well. So yeah, we're really excited. And yeah, you can stay up to date on positive messages throughout the summer. That's what we'll be working on. So yeah. Great. And um, Carly, do you mind introducing us to your 2024 leadership team? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, um, so our leadership team. So I'm Carly Ray, and I'm president um, this year. We have Faiza, who is our vice president. We have Karen, who's going to be the director of events. And we've been working together. We do have a Google Doc together. So if there are any event ideas, any society leaders want to partner us with, um, we can go in a group chat and discuss that. We also have Kat, who's the director of our internal affairs. And I know she's not here because she was in Paris. Um, and she was sending me amazing pictures. And I was like, this is on my bucket list of where I need to go. It was even raining one day, but it was still really pretty. Um, and then we have Salima, who's the director of technology. And I know she was going to work with me. We're going to be working on the website. And then we have Kristen, who's the director of finance. And then we have Carissa, who's the director of PR. And we're going to be working together to keep all of our social media up to date this summer as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carly Ray. And I look forward to the events that you come up with. Hopefully we'll have time to do like a joint has event as well. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Officially launch us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is anyone here from the management and finance student club? No clubs are represented today. 
that is okay. We're going to move on. Okay, so you can sign up for our newsletter by scanning this link here. And if you need to email me for any reason, my email address is here. Even though we're technically not in session over summer, um, we'll, we'll be around over summer. You can also add us on WhatsApp and Facebook right now. And we can stop recording.